It's April 6, 2016. C is for cloak. Welcome, viewers and subscribers. My last video featured some pretty wild stuff. This hexagonal cloaked object in the sky. Several minutes of it. Um, and I just didn't know what was going on. The very earliest hour that I caught it, I ran outside after I saw fast movement in the clouds and I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was pretty spectacular. I know I was looking at something interacting with matter up there. It was spewing off some sort of jet of steam or particles or vapor off to, the, uh, off to my right side. And so I decided to do this video. It's a long time coming. It's about camouflage or cloaking. Basically, you've got two choices. You can bend light or you can blend in with the light. Bending light has been achieved by two methods. One is with the Rochester cloak, and you can look up the University of Rochester for that. The other is with um, a hexagonal-based geometry with triangles in it surrounding a hidden object that bend the light in a way that moves it around the region, but then back toward the target in the way it was intended to to begin with. There are some limitations regarding viewing angle and there traditionally at least was some distortion which made it difficult to go to market with this sort of device. However, they've had a lot better luck with newer geometries that they've tried and even better luck with nanomaterials. The nanomaterials can be set out in a variety of ways to produce different effects as well. It can make it look like a plane surface. Uh, it can just hide whatever's underneath. We'll be getting into that a little more later on. Wisely, we've been looking to animals and nature and how they've evolved their own techniques. I guess passive cloaking is called camouflage. And there is one animal, however, that sort of puts the traditional ideas or categories on its head. Cuttlefish use light-sensitive cells to grab information about the texture and the color of what they're near and their nervous system translates that into a series of muscle movements which control pigmented skin expanding and contracting depending on what the situation requires. In an abstract sense what's going on is the sensor picks up the light environment around it it goes into something that processes it and there's an output control. While the cuttlefish has the amazing property of having a nervous system that takes care of this automatically for it, we can mimic what it does, however, by having a computer-controlled process, a manipulator. A sensor can be any kind of reading instrument. It can be active or passive, so it can rely on the light hitting it, or it can actually broadcast light out so that it reflects back to it. The manipulator can be complex, it can change things like turn one wavelength into another, filter some out, or it can be simple and it can be a pass-through, meaning that it just reads a certain band of light and then tells the output control that's what it needs to display. As well, the output control uh, could be biological, it could be waveform, uh, it could broadcast to assemble millions of nanoparticles to display something. And this is the model that we have indeed been working on, as you can see there. Cephalopod skins are inspiring opto-electronic camouflage systems. As we get better with nanotechnology, we're able to broadcast, read, bend, and display, and have computers all on some very, very small scales. Another cephalopod trait that we're mimicking is how to display texture based on a read from the sensor side. Finally, we have some quite interesting applications like crystalline robots that can self-assemble or that can detect something out there and then, as a response, assemble something else as the output. In addition to hiding traditional material objects, it could be that the air-stable particles, the nanoparticles, also carry this property, that is, the ability to receive and broadcast light Watch this next segment closely. The clouds of whatever are dark enough to obscure the sun, yet when they pull off of it, when they're no longer directly in front of it, they appear to become transparent. How could that be the case if they were regular opaque objects? That's not water vapor there. We know how clouds behave, and that's certainly not the way they do. See, as they come off, they become 
not even dense thick white clouds, or dark clouds. This would also explain why, with those clouds in particular, my camera has a very difficult time focusing on them. Many of you out there, including viewers who have written to me, complain of the same thing happening with their camera. So, given today's research, given the footage that I've reviewed, and all the so far unexplained phenomena being answered by this one theory, I do think we have a working theory that those particles can indeed cloak.